I knew it. You were telling me about your dad or your granddad or something. Well, yeah, well, do I start? Yeah, off you go. Right, well, my old man, my father, we should say old man, because he wasn't old when he said this. Um, um, he was quite, um, not envious, but he respected me because I was an engineer. And also, um, loved music. He was, um, a piano player, very talented, had his own band, the, uh, the Dayaks, um, pre-war uh, social, well, they used to call them sh social bands, dance bands, all dressed in bib and tuckers and several of the members of the band, not very big, went on to be pros, but he desperately wanted to do that at one stage, but my grandfather, we had the family business, the Davis Brothers, which was um, uh, well, work right through the war, uh, making forms for the mosquito and high tech stuff for the government. Uh, half his work, um, workforce, because they were younger, had to go and fight. Unfortunately, a lot of them died, but it, there was a skeleton uh, crew of um, uh, semi retired guys who kept on working there, who brought in people, women, to work machines to produce the stuff for the war effort. Anyway, Prior to that, um, uh, he did train in college in the young days, engineering. Desperately wanted to be an engineer because he was a, a, a motorcycle enthusiast and a race biker and he actually raced up Caffelli Mountain in the early days. But he desperately wanted to do what I was doing. But the old man, his old man, I shouldn't say that, but my grandfather said, you've got to keep this business going. It's, uh, the most respected uh, high-tech woodworking company within in Cardiff, and his mother, his his mother said the same. You've got to keep the business going. I'm sorry, you've got to do it. So there was no question in those days. He was terrified of his old man, but like I was a bit terrified of him. <laughs> anyway, I was sitting there just coming home uh, when I was an apprentice or just before working out. Um, things with uh, engineering and then um, uh, he'd ask questions and uh, he said that's not going to work or something. Anyway a funny story, um, I'm going to swear now, um, I used to build rocket engines in the garage and he used to be very very worried with these rocket engines. I built a pulse jet engine in school which is a miniature, a miniature a V1, which was the flying bomb, a pulse jet engine, and I have also built a ramjet engine, which he was terrified of it, because it used to pressurise with a combustion chamber, uh, the petrol or the whatever fuel I used was round the, um, the engine, and the hotter it got, the longer the flame out the back. <coughs> I never flew it, and he said, you should, don't ever run that again. Anyway, but I built, a, I thought, we're not going to end there, I built a solid fuel, um, and a small one, about nine inches long, solid fuel. And I was running it all morning on the grass on a, what we call a, a pylon, which is a stick in there with a, a wire, nine foot long, with the engine on the wire, so stand back, light it up like a firework, and it would whiz round and round until the fuel went out. Anyway, I was now lunchtime father come home with the car you see and he, he said what are you doing he said I told you he said that, that what are you doing this bloody dangerous <coughs> I said oh look it's perfect it's perfectly safe there's a there's a, um, a, a release valve on it do you know what happened I started it up and we had a compost heat heat here with the grass cutting stinking oh, comp and he was in front of me he went that's very good, I know. You designed that all of a sudden. Fucking hell, man. <coughs> it blew up. <coughs> Half of it went into the grass, into the grass, about about half a foot down. The other bit went across into the next road. Mrs. Morgan, Ainsley's mother, was cooking lunch, dropped the dropped the whistle, thought there was a bomb. <coughs> My father went, white. Arsed over backwards into the compost, <laughs> shouted, You fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> I 
I always, why come here, my mother? I always knew we should bet a fucking idiot. <laughs> Never do that again. <laughs> I told that to Latimer. <laughs> it was perfectly true. But I realised that it was. If it had come out, it would have, it'd have been dead, or I'd have been dead. It went into, into there, half this engine. And the other one, I found, never found it. Went over by Mrs. A Mrs. Morgan, with a friend of mine, which is across the road, like right up in the air. And she dropped something in the kitchen. Thought it was a bomb. It made a hell of an explosion. Well, if an engine was that big, <coughs> the valve were clogged, and it was a bomb. And father realised, he said, "You made a bloody bomb." <laughs> it's not, I should have been running it all the morning. It's been going round us. <laughs> said, don't ever build another one of those. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay.